in this video i'm going to solve the third question which is question number 23rd from chapter 12 equilibrium and elasticity forces f1 vector f2 vector and f3 vector act on the structure as shown in the figure shown in an overhead view so you have to see the figure and this figure is given in the overhead view which is nothing but the aerial view and if you see the figure we have three forces f1 f2 and f3 we wish to put the structure in equilibrium by applying a fourth force at a point such as p so you have to see the figure again we have a point p here in this point p we are going to apply the fourth force by that we are going to keep the entire structure in equilibrium and the force we are going to apply at point p has vector components it has two components horizontal as well as vertical component so that component they already mentioned in this diagram so what are the horizontal component so horizontal force as well as the vertical force clear we are given that a equal to 2 meter b equal to 3 meter and c equal to 1 meter and the component of f1 f2 f3 is given here f1 is equal to 30 newton f2 equal to 10 newton and f3 equal to 5 newton by using all these things we are going to find what should be the value for the horizontal force what should be the value for the vertical force which is mentioned in the diagram clear and finally we are going to find the value of d what is the d from the point zero to this vertical force we have the value d am i right we are going to find what should be the value for d so now we have to answer one by one so first of all we are going to deal with the horizontal force so for calculating the value of horizontal force we have to use this diagram so before that i would like to write what is given in the question so what are the things given in the question f1 magnitude which is 30 newton right and f2 has the value of 10 newton and f3 is 5 newton right and then the distance a is mentioned as 2 meter and b is equal to 3 meter and c which is equal to 1 meter right and what are the things we are going to find we are going to find in the first question we are going to find the value of horizontal force in the second question we are going to find what should be the vertical force and in the third question we are going to find the value for d clear so let's we start with the first question okay and we are going to use all these given okay so first of all we have to see the diagram also now you have to see the direction of the forces which is already mentioned here in blue color am i right you can see all uh, some force or mentioned here in blue color right so now we are going to find the value of this fh right we are going to find the value of this fh now this fh force is in the right direction is there any other force in the left direction because the rightward force which is equal to leftward force we already studied in chapter number five right so here if you see the diagram f1 f2 and fb all are downwards and upwards right and now we have only two forces one is in the left side one is in the right side so what is in the right side the right side force which is equal to fh the left side force which is equal to f3 so by using this arrow we can easily find am i right am i right or not so what i am going to do i am going to equate this fh and f3 so for getting the answer for the first question we are going to find to find the horizontal force the horizontal force fh so for that 
I am going to choose FH as well as F3. Why? Because FH is in the right direction and F3 is in the left direction. So FH which is equal to F3, right? And F3 value we already got from the question which is 5 Newton. So therefore, if F3 is 5 Newton, what should be the value of FH? FH also have the same value because rightward force which is equal to leftward force so F3 we already have 5 Newton therefore my FH that means the horizontal force is also equal to 5 Newton that's it because we have to answer each question from the diagram right okay now we have to find the value of FV which is vertical force so for getting the vertical force again I am going to see the diagram and what are the forces which is acting upward and what are the forces acting downward so if you see this diagram we should discard this FH as well as F3 because these two forces are left side and right side. But apart from that, we have three forces, F1 and F2 acting downward direction, but FV is acting upward direction. So my upward force, which is equal to downward force, right? So that means by using that, we can easily find the value of FV, right? So in the second part, to find, to find, the vertical force FV. So for that, we have to use the upward force and downward force. Upward force has the value of positive, downward force has the value of negative, or the upward force, which is equal to downward force. It's up to you. Clear? Either you can write upward minus downward, which is equal to zero, or you have to write upward equal to downward. So if you want to write like this, so I will mention both. Okay. So F1 plus F2 is equal to FV or, or if you want to write like this FV minus F1 minus F2 equal to 0 both are correct it's clear now I'm going to use this equation so better we can deal with one type of equation okay so F1 plus F2 because these two forces are downward direction and the FV force is in the vert vertical direction. Better we can see the diagram one more time. So you have to see here F1 downward, F2 downward, but FV is upward. So that means our equation is right here, right? So now by using this, we are going to find what should be the value of FV. Therefore, therefore FV, which is equal to F1 plus F2, and they already gave the value for F1 and F2. F1 takes the value of 30 Newton and F2 takes the value of 10 Newton. So 30 plus 10 gives you 40 Newton, right? So that is the answer for the vertical force. So vertical force, which is equal to 30 plus 10, right? Which is equal to 40 Newton. That is the answer for the second question. Clear? Now we have one more question to find the value of D, correct? So again, we have to see the uh, diagram. So for getting the value of D, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the torque effect for each force with respect to only one axis. So which axis I'm going to take? I'm going to take the axis of rotation in this point O. So I'm going to take, so you can see the black color dot, Actually, I mentioned the black color dot near to O. So with respect to, to this point O, I'm going to take, that is our axis of rotation. And based on this point, I'm going to deal, I'm going to calculate torque effect for each forces. And we already studied the formula for the torque. What is the formula for the torque? Torque, which is equal to R cross F and R rf sine theta and here everything is deal with 90 degrees so sine 90 becomes one because r cross f which is equal to r of sine theta and if you see this diagram the angle between the r and f is everything is 90 degree so i i can write this torque effect as rf clear so i'm going to apply this torque effect with respect to this point o that means i'm going to keep this is my axis of rotation and by using this we are going to find what should be the value of D. So better I can do one thing. I'm going to calculate near to the diagram. So that will be easy for our understanding. Clear? So for getting the answer for the third part, third part we are going to find the value of D. Correct? 
computing torque we are going to compute uh, compute means we are going to calculate the torque effect at point o that means that is our axis of rotation so computing torques at point o correct okay first of all if you keep this is your point of rotation you have to keep you have to find what should be the value of r for this f1 because there is no r value for this f1 because we consider the point o and this o is exactly closer to this f1 there is no r value that means there is no perpendicular distance right so that means for f1 we don't have the distance so we have to keep because wherever you are going to apply the torque near to the axis exactly in the point of axis of rotation your torque effect is zero correct so that means in this point o we don't have the value of r that means the perpendicular r is not there so we have to consider f1 multiplied by zero that means r value here is zero and now we have to identify the second force with respect to the distance from o point o so from point o to the second force f2 is b that means the distance from this point to this second force what is the r value here the r value is b right and the most important thing this force is in the downward direction it will move in the clockwise direction so what we studied in the previous chapter the torque effect will have the negative value if it is having clockwise direction so for f2 the sign is negative why because the torque effect is in the clockwise direction so f2 multiply by r value what is the r here with respect to point o our r is exactly b that means this is the distance from point o to f2 so f2 multiply by b right i simply apply the rule of torque so don't get confused okay now we have to apply this torque effect for f3 force so if you see this f3 force if you want to keep this system in the equilibrium condition with respect to this distance a the torque will again moving in this direction that means clockwise direction right so what should be the sign for the third force again minus and here f3 multiplied by what should be the perpendicular distance so that means better we can take this force and we can keep it here so this is our force f3 right so let's we take f3 i just simply move this value here and this is the distance of a right i simply shifted this f3 and a near to the point because we kept this o is our point of reference clear so now here this f3 will go to the clockwise direction again it will have the negative value and what should be the r value here the r value for f3 is a so you can take this also no issue because both are exactly the same so i have to multiply with a and finally we have one more force again you have to deal if you want to take this two point here what should be the value because this force is in the upward direction it will move in the counter clockwise direction which will have the value of positive so positive value of fv multiplied by what should be the distance here exactly d correct which is equal to zero now anything multiplied by zero i'm going to substitute the value here i'm going to substitute the value here we have all the data f1 multiplied by zero f1 have value we have what is that value our f1 value here is f1 is 30 newton f2 is 10 newton and f3 is 5 newton and a b c takes the value of 2 3 1 so i'm going to substitute the value here so let's we substitute one by one so f1 will have the value of 30 so 30 multiplied by 0 is 0 so this term will gone f2 value 10 newton right 10 multiplied by b what i told you for b b is b have the value of 3 right so f 10 multiplied by 3 minus f3 is exactly 5 newton right multiplied by a which has the value of 2 meter 
So 5 multiplied by 2 plus Fv. What is the value of Fv? We already found the value of Fv here. What's the value of Fv? Which is 40, right? So 40, 40 multiplied by D. We don't know the value of D. So I have to equate this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply. So this will have 30, this one 10, and here 40D, which is equal to 0. So I'm going to move this number minus 30 minus 10 to the right hand side. By that, this equation becomes 40D, which is equal to plus 40, right? Because this minus, both are minus. When it goes to the right hand side, it will take the value of positive. So 30 plus 10 becomes 40. Therefore, D, which is equal to 40 divided by 40, which is exactly 1 meter. So this is the answer for the third question. Clear? So for getting the third question, we have to apply the torque rule for uh, with respect to the point O. So we have to take, take the point O as our axis of rotation. Clear? So if the torque will be in the counterclockwise direction, it will take the value of positive sign. If it is moving in the clockwise direction, it takes the sign negative. So keep this information in your mind. Clear? That's it. Thank you. So the answer for the last question is one meter. That's it.